before going into the uh, kidney dialysis, I just need to briefly outline the function of the kidney. Kidney produces urine. By forming this, it also get the get rid of the body of toxic substances. Not only kidney removes the uh, water as well as toxic substances, it also plays an important part in maintaining the acid-base balance as well as in maintaining and regulating the blood pressure. It also produces hormone called erythropoietin which is helpful in uh, producing hemoglobin, in improving the hemoglobin as well as it also invo is involved in conversion of vitamin D into active vitamin D which helps in the strengthening of the bones. Renal dialysis is the way by which the blood is removed of uh, excess water as well as the toxic substances by the use of external apparatus like a filter which is a synthetic filter attached to a machine or it can be cleaned from inside by uh, putting a small tube inside the abdomen through which the uh, medical, uh, medicated uh, liquid will be inserted into the tummy and after a specified period the fluid is removed this way the fluid which stays inside the abdomen cleans the blood of the toxic substances as well as other minerals which is found in excess in the patient's body and get rid of these toxic substances. I discussed about the two types of dialysis, one is hemodialysis where the blood is purified by the external synthetic filter which consists of the membrane, synthetic membrane. Another one is called peritoneal dialysis where the blood is purified from within where insert a small tube into the tummy of the abdomen and uh, by insulating a, a medicated fluid it will clean from inside. So both are safe to the patient. It depends, it is the choice by the doctor in discussion with the patient that will determine what type of dialysis the patient is going to be prescribed. Dialysis is not without risk. The commonest risk factor is the patient is having is the cardiac risk factor. If the patient is having severe compromised cardiac function, they are at risk of dialysis, especially hemodialysis. And to start with the dialysis hemodialysis patient will put, will insert a catheter if it, if the patient needs a urgent dialysis that can lead to increased risk of infection. Usually, we st some patients if we start on emergent dialysis, we put a synthetic tube in the neck or in the thigh or below the neck. So these are prone for repeated infections. If the patient requires long-term dialysis. We, what we create what is called the AV fistula or AV graft. So during the dialysis, hemodialysis procedure, the patient are at risk of developing low blood pressure. They are at risk of developing increased heart rate or decreased heart rate. They are at risk of developing fever, risk of developing seizures. Sometimes they are at risk of, at risk of developing allergic reactions to the external synthetic membrane and there is also increased risk of infection if it, if it is not properly carried out. Long term dialysis also can lead to changes in the bone, it can cause uh, what is called a mineral bone disease as well as some patients can develop dialysis related amyloidosis. There are also increased risk of coronary art artery heart disease increased risk of arrhythmia and sudden cardiac death. The most important precaution that should be taken by the patient while undergoing dialysis is to follow a strict schedule. They should do the dialysis as per schedule as and as per recommendation by the doctor. One more important thing is that they should not skip medicines prescribed by the concerned doctor like uh, erythropoietin which is a hormone which improves the hemoglobin. Blood pressure medications should be strictly taken 
care of. Another important factor is that they should strictly adhere to the diet restrictions which has been prescribed by the treating doctor as well as the nutritionist like uh, uh, not taking too much of water. They should not gain excess weight, not more than 2 kg between 2 dialysis and they should be avoiding some important foods which are rich in potassium and phosphate as prescribed by the nutritionist as well as the treating doctor. One is we assess the uh, efficiency of dialysis, one is by patient's well-being. The patient definitely gains weight, not by increasing in the body fluid, but usually general weight dry, what you call the improvement in the dry weight, what is called they put on more uh, fat, more protein, uh, more muscle. This is what we call the well, sense of well-being, they have improved appetite. They're, they have a feel good factor. Another one is by routine measurement of parameters, uh, we, what we call the dialysis adequacy testing, which is done by the treating doctor. It can remove excess water, it can correct the metabolic abnormalities, like uh, in, which is accumulating in the uh, renal failure patients like uh, increased creatinine, increased uric acid and it normalizes the sodium as well as acid base balance. It also helps in the patient's nutrition status, they feel well, they have improved appetite, probably overall the general condition of the patient improves very much after dialysis. But there are certain factors which cannot be Corrected by dialysis, you know that patient needs external support like for bone strengthening, they may have to rely on medications as well as medic medicines which, which will improve the hemoglobin level like erythropoietin, which has to be administered twice or thrice weekly or some, some other uh, brands of uh, erythropoietin which is long acting which can be administered once in a week or once in a month.